So ladies, gentlemen, starlings, or bat family, today's video is going to be a little bit of a hybrid video, so just to let you know right off the bat that this will have timestamps. The main portion of this video will be me talking about the new Batwoman suit for Javicia Leslie, but also I'll go into the castings for Eclipse, so freaking the shade and more towards the end of this video, so I just thought I'd do a little bit of a DCTV combo. Uh, videos. Oh yeah, and by the way, we've got a first look at Red Hood, the actual Red Hood suit for Season 3. Jason Todd in the suit. It looks good. I did a video on that yesterday. Go check it out in the cards above or at the end card of this video. And uh, why not uh, check out my Patreon as well? I thought I may as well plug that at the beginning because some people ask, do I have a Patreon? Uh, yeah, that is in the top pinned comment. If you want to support the channel even further, I'd really appreciate you checking that out. So before we get onto the whole Stargirl stuff in this video, Javicia Leslie's Batwoman suit has officially been revealed. Obviously, she is playing Rowan Wilder in Batwoman Season 2. Long story short, if you don't know what the heck's going on there, Batwoman is a series on the CW. It had Ruby Rose playing Kate Kane, the, you know, very traditionalist Batwoman in the comics, but she didn't want anything to do with the show anymore, and the reasons are actually kind of vague. You may think you may know a reason, but then it's kind of divulged into another reason. It's not fully transparent. So as a result of that, CW didn't really want to cancel the show. They wanted to press onwards. They wanted to find a new character to take up the mantle of Gotham's protector uh, and that is Ryan Wilder and they found the actress Javicia Leslie to play uh, the new Batwoman and naturally so we expected a new suit now not so long ago we got some set photos of Ryan Wilder in the Batwoman suit anyone and their grandmother could have guessed that she would be wearing Ruby Rose's bat suit just like Ruby Rose K. Kane wore Bruce Wayne's Batman suit in the first episode or two yeah, first couple of episodes. And the exact same thing here. And we actually learned that this new suit that you're seeing on screen right now will be featured in Season 2, Episode 3. So the first couple of episodes, as you kind of know, a little newbie Ryan Wilder learning the ropes and, you know, introducing the character for crying out loud. Then Luke Fox is most likely going to fashion her this new bat suit. And I have to say, guys, it does look very nice. And yes, it is a different suit. Some of you may be like at first glance, hey, isn't this basically just Ruby Rose's actual bat suit? But no, there are are actually quite a lot of differences so what i really like about this mainly is the new subtle touches of red i have to say like i don't want to fanboy out but i love suit design that's why i was fanboying out my red hood suit video yesterday and uh, seriously watch that if you haven't already it's a really really good looking suit but this one it, it, it like came in in the period of when the cw are finally getting better with their suits and this this really happened well over a year ago when the flash suit had its first makeover if you will granted that the helmet was terrible but we got those new materials didn't we for the flash season six suit was it was it season five but he was missing the chin strap but around that time we got the new look at the batwoman suit in the elseworlds crossover and like they were finally moving on to new avenues for making suits and i would say that this is this is good enough to put in a freaking movie it really is going back onto my point here this is different from ruby rose's bat suit in many ways it may not be obvious at first but we've got a whole new bat belt so it's not that kind of diagonal belt that kate kane was Sporting. This has actually got a proper bat logo on it. Now, if I'm looking at Kate Kane's, that does have a bat logo on it, but this one is obviously just cut around the edges of the actual bat emblem itself. This is a lot more kind of crimson red, but also on her van braces or wrist guards, whatever you want to freaking call them, they are very red as well. And they're a lot more like stuff like that included into the suit makes it pop out so much more. Also, another detail I appreciate is that they, they kept the kind of lining kind of pattern that they had around the chest area. But there is very big differences here that a lot of you may not have realized. Whereas on Kate Kane's suit, around the lining of the chest area, but she also had lining on her arms there. Other than that, it was just kind of this cross-hatched kind of meshy material. But what they've done with Javicia Leslie's new iteration of Kate Kane's bat suit is that those areas are now given these matted matted kind of bulky look so it kind of reminds me of uh christian bale's batman begins suit you know how that was quite blocky armor like you had the shoulder pauldron but you had another block here another block there as you see on javicia leslie's arm they're like little blocks of matted material rather than just giving way to like the raw material of the suit that kate kane had i like both but this really adds a much nicer combo design than what kate kane had on her suit love the original batwoman suit but th these added little blocks make it stand out and pop a lot more so that can be seen in the middle area the the arm area and just uh, around everywhere really whereas if you look at the case cane suit as i said there's there's not one instance of that other than just above the logo there everywhere else is just the 
pure suit mesh kind of design to it. Another thing I am clapping my hands about, I really, really like that they did this because it really is so jarring. It really is when they removed it on Kate Kane's suit. So on Javicia Leslie's new Batwoman suit, you can notice that they've added the kind of almost like Under Armour pajama look to make a very kind of black transition from the, the, the kind of symbol armor to the cowl. Whereas what they did, this was originally there on Ruby Rose's Batwoman suit, but then uh, a little upgrade in the suit around halfway through the season, they got rid of the neck material so that her skin was exposed. And I do appreciate it in one sense, but it's, it just looked, it looks jarring. Now in Jafisia Leslie's bat suit, you can see that it, it's just, it's, there's no gap really other than her face for where her skin is exposed. Um, and, and everywhere else is just one almost seamless costume or suit, if you will. Uh, and, and I feel like that adds everything. Now the cow design is actually the same. Like, you know, you've got the top forehead bit, but then the inner kind of forehead bit just before the hair comes through. That was indeed present on Ruby Rose's bat suit. But obviously the biggest thing about the cow, the difference is the hair. Now she's got very much so afro hair. The biggest speculation now people are saying, is this her real hair? I personally think it looks awesome. I know some people are second guessing it. You could obviously implement so many different things about superhero and hair and superhero heroes and capes because I feel like with this really really big hair you could just grab onto Batwoman's hair and like that would be one way to just I don't know in a fight any means necessary right you just grab her hair or grab the cape I suppose which is why you could pick at anything like that but that's where you kind of need to suspend your disbelief a little bit because it's just like well I'm sure you could grab a hold of Batman's cape and then just yank him kind of thing same thing with the hair so it doesn't bother me on that level she even had her own comments to say on the suit and actually the hair specifically saying I love the fact that Ryan is becoming her own Batwoman. It's her style, her swag, and her moment. I felt it was important that viewers could tell by the silhouette that Batwoman was a black girl. With the form-fitting suit and beautiful afro, we definitely nailed it. And I agree. It looks, she looks so good. I just really hope that her acting is, I've never seen her in anything else. So I really hope with all the weak points that I think Batwoman has as a show, that season two, which this is very much so basically a reboot, it, it just is. You've got a new Batwoman. So this is Batwoman season one. She, she's got to go through everything again. This isn't continuing on season one with the same character. This is a new Batwoman. So I really hope she encapsulates me as an audience member, which hey, you know, I'm, I'm sure she will. I hope she will. I can't say because I don't know. I've never seen her in anything, but she looks amazing. Another detail I really appreciate, and you kind of may have realized without realizing it kind of thing, because that's just how kind of cool and, and seamless it fits into the suit. On Kate Kane's suit, the cape clippings, which is like big, and it reminds me of Tyler Hecklin's Superman suit. It's just like that big chunk going back like that. But on Jafisia Leslie's Batwoman suit, it's a lot more seamless, a lot less intrusive. It leaves enough space for that grand bat design there. It looks really, really sweet there. And I think that has everything to say about it apart from apparently the inside of this cape is indeed red it makes a lot of sense for that to be the case so yeah and, and that is all my thoughts on the suit now i did want to chuck in this as well because we've got some more looks at the batman beat, which is very interesting because the car we saw on before there was a load of motion cap stickers as well and that was very obviously meant to be the 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 car of transport batwoman got around in but now we're seeing that car again but with the actual bat look and, you know, I, I, this is meant to be the Batmobile. Um, I don't know. The car looks cool itself. Don't get me wrong. And a Batmobile is a Batmobile at the end of the day. You can have different iterations of it. I just think it looks a bit too toy car-y. And I'm not, like, trying to put this down just because it's on a network show or anything like that. It just feels like a Hot Wheels car with some, like, little decals on it at the front. I would have preferred, believe it or not, a much more low-key design. I rather it just be black, maybe even with a matted black bat emblem on it, maybe with an outline of red rather than just the, <laughs> I don't know, maybe it just is because it's taken in this photo here. It doesn't look as cool to me, but those little orangey red little parts at the front and the bat emblem, it just feels a bit too cheesy. I'm really not trying to put it down. I just, that's the truth. That's my opinion. I prefer a much more low profile look 
when it comes to something like a car, like a Batmobile. And honestly, I don't mean to deliberately compare this to like the movie ones, but like think about Robert Pattinson's Batmobile that is most recently uh, being discussed in the fandom. Yes, I know that's a movie car, just, just separate that all for a second, but it's like there's subtle elements of incorporating the bat, like the engine, you could argue like it goes up in the shape of a bat kind of thing there. It doesn't make any attempts to smack a massive bat emblem on it. Even the bat bike has two pointed like bat ears like that. I would have preferred something like that on this car. Do you know what I mean? Something a lot more low key. You can do a Batmobile without putting a massive crayon on it and, and, and putting this is my Batmobile and that's what this feels like what they've done. So yeah, I would love to know your thoughts on that but let's move on to Stargo. So I wanted to include the latest Stargo updates in this video because I felt like it, it didn't deserve its own video. This is very loose information, but it's some first tangible stuff that you can now attribute to the show in season two because we've got literal castings for very big characters in season two, if you didn't know already, which you should do if you're a Stargo fan. We've got Eclipso coming to season two, which is really, really awesome. The debut of Eclipso in live action. And of course, with the ISA more or less kind of defeated, we've got the Shade who is now being cast. And if you know already from Stargo, you know that the Shade was kind of like you know, he left the ISA for, for some kind of indifference with them. We don't really know the nits and grit details as to why the Shade left the ISA, but now, as we know from the very end of Stargo Season 1, he has returned and he very well took a seat at the table, kind of making himself back at home, and I, and I can't wait to see where things go with that. So, this is from Deadline. They say, DC Stargirl's found this Eclipso in the Shade, two of its primary villains for the series' upcoming Season 2 on the CW. Now, Nick uh, Tarabay, The Expanse, will play the series regular series regular role of Eclipso. And Jonathan Cake uh, from The Affair will recur as The Shade. Additionally, Issa uh, Penerejo, I'm sorry if I butchered that name, will recur as an undisclosed DC character. Now, I'd love to know who you think Issa, I, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, like YSA Issa, uh, will be playing. Uh, at the moment, there is no information on her role. It honestly could be anyone, so that's why I want to leave it to you guys without speculating uh, for a thousand hours in this video. They also mentioned that Stargirl creator and EP Jeff Johns teased the upcoming Eclipso and the Shade DC characters earlier this month at New York Comic Con. Uh, saying Eclipso is so terrifying. I've always loved the character and he's a very different antagonist or villain than the Injustice Society of America, John said. He added that the Shade is the most powerful of them all and very threatening because no one knows exactly what he wants. So as for the casting, my thoughts on it is I, I'm indifferent. I don't really know Megaly what to expect with uh, a couple of them, but I do know uh, Nick Tarabay from The Expanse, uh, and I've seen him in a couple of other things, I believe Spartacus. Um, but yeah, I, I can imagine him playing quite a sinister role, if you know what I mean. I can almost see the visual effects of Eclipso that that they'll put on his face, if you know what I mean. But, but as for Jonathan Cake, I don't think I've seen him in anything. I'm looking at his movies and TV shows now, uh, maybe one or two things, but I don't, I don't remember really anything. So that's why I don't really know what to make of this beyond the Eclipso casting. He looks the role, he looks the part. I will have to watch a few things going into season two to see what his kind of acting chops are like. But I'm sure, like, I have faith in the casting of Stargirl since they've casted very well on that show. And also, of course, we've got Issa Penry Joe. Uh, who, who do you think she's going to be playing? But that is the main gist of this Stargirl news. Just wanted to chuck it in there because we have officially got these castings. And I would love to know what you think of it down in the comments below. But if you enjoyed this video overall, guys, this kind of little DC news roundup video, I'd really appreciate your like on it. As it really does show your support for the channel. I know I say that all the time. But like it, like it, like it. It really does help. And subscribe for more updates like this on your favorite DC TV shows. We've also got The Mandalorian coming around very, very, very soon, so make sure you watch out for that video on this channel if you're watching Season 2 of The Mandalorian, because I will be reviewing it. As always, links to my socials and my Patreon and places to support me are in the top pinned comment. Check it out. Uh, but that is absolutely everything, so thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have a lovely rest of your day, and I'll see you, Bat Family and Starlings, in the next video. Goodbye.